Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to Map to Love with Catherine Nicole. I appreciate all of you and the love and support, the likes, the subscriptions, readings, donations, gifts from Amazon, whatever it is. I appreciate you all so very much. This is going to be your soulmate twin flame reading for March or whenever you're guided to this. Remember, time is an illusion. It's for the next four to five week time period, depending on where you're at in your journey. You may have experienced some of this or going through it now or it's coming towards you. Uh, take what resonates with you and leave the rest behind. We're going to start with getting the energy within and around you and your person and, um, you know, what's being healed, what's being looked at in this time period, in this month. For you, it's completion. Finally letting the old die, laying it to rest, this death and rebirth completion, like the world completion, completing a cycle, letting go of the past, moving on. The sun is peeking out there, you know, this is sacral chakra opening and clearing connecting to your emotions expanding and growing spiritually healing any wounds of the past connecting to the sacred sexuality within yourself and moving into this new life but there's some kind of completion and for your person destiny this is destiny they know this union is destiny. They're willing to fight for it, to do the work for it. Some people may not have agreed with it, but others are blessing it. You see that? But this is destiny. Trusting their spiritual guidance. Your person is trusting their guidance on this. Shadows and light, yin and yang, you know, that kind of energy. Balance, masculine and feminine balance. Destiny, moving towards their destiny. Also, recognizing their life purpose or more aspects of it, I'm hearing. The energy between that's being healed and restored and really looked at is isolation. Maybe isolating yourself from one another, not going out, not, not communicating, uh, speaking your truth, clearing the air. One of you or both of you been in hermit mode, isolating yourself, your feelings, you know, wanting to get up and get dress up and get fancy kind of a feeling. And that would be good for you to go out. Complete, completing the cycle of non-communication, completing the cycle of isolation. Healing. Perhaps this is why healing from grief, because we see this completion and there's, you know, maybe someone's crossed over, lost a family member, lost a loved one, something or something about grieving the loss. And look at this grief. So it's healing, maybe a loss of a pet. I'm sending you love. But this is heart healing, letting go of the past. Grief allows us the opportunity to open up to love, reaching out, communicating, expressing yourself, coming out of isolation. So there's healing happening. But let's get some supportive energy around you and messages. Gratitude list. Counting your blessings and feeling gratitude for what you already have helps you to be centered in your heart instead of fixated on worries in your mind. What and who are you grateful for right now? Keep focusing upon gratitude and you'll discover amazing generosity of this universe. So this is allowing, letting go of the past, being uh, grateful for what you've learned, being, being grateful for whatever that person or that thing brought to you, but now you're leaving it behind. Writing down what you appreciate, living in that state of unconditional love and appreciation for this opportunity to complete certain cycles in your life to move forward, this rebirth. What about for your person? attracting not chasing this has come up for a lot of different signs different positions but you know allowing things to come to you instead of pushing for them manipulating it being erratic about it you know what I mean it's finding that balance right anything or anyone you chase after will run the other way because of the fears underlying the chasing energy instead attract what you need by sending out love gratitude and welcoming energy so your person's tapping into the divine feminine within because the divine feminine energy we all have feminine and masculine energies that is the receptive energy the attracting energy the gratitude that you know just that 
unconditional love. That's what the divine feminine is. So your person is tapping in, finding the balance of the masculine and feminine. And, you know, this is what they're wanting to attract, this, this partnership, this divine sacred union, peaceful times, having fun, romance. Taking a trip from water, balancing the head and the heart, feeling strong and confident. See that lion right there? Being guided by spirit. No longer forcing things. Trusting. And what's the message on the shared space? The isolation. Dreams of abundance. So if you're in separation from your person or you're manifesting them into your life and you're feeling a bit isolated, maybe both parties are, when you dream, you're connecting to them. When you when you meditate, you're connecting to your, to your sacred divine lover. And by allowing yourself to let go and heal and, and be restored, you know, you're you're getting ready for this, for this abundance coming in. Your dreams are coming into reality. As you sleep, God and your angels and your higher self are giving you divinely guided ideas, answers, and solutions. Be sure to record your dreams in a journal because they contain valuable insights that will help you manifest your desires into reality exactly. To come out of this isolation, right? Toward your destiny. Okay, with the Malefic deck, we are going to get information on any shadows or blocks or challenges, things that really that Spirit really wants you to look at during this time period for you and your person. What could be holding back this new beginning, this completion, moving towards your destiny? So make sure that you are aware. So whatever resonates with you, yeah, to, you know, do something with that. Look at that. Investigate. Okay, for you, any blocks, any challenges, any things that need to be healed, shadows coming out. The Wheel of Fortune, this is destiny. Isn't this related to Sagittarius, I believe? But this is um, perhaps, you know, staying stuck in this energy, not completing, not moving on, hold, gripping the past, right? Holding, holding on to a past person or a situation or a feeling or something. Holding on to that, it blocks you from moving forward towards your destiny. King of Swords, that's the need to be more logical. Balance your head and your heart space. Get that clarity. Take charge. Make decisions. So this is bringing the masculine energy within you into balance. Balancing the head and the heart, being clear, being focused. The knave of swords, there's that truth, there's that clarity. And, and what I feel is happening in this time period is you're finding peace with it all now. You're finally integrating all of that knowledge, all of what's happened, all of what you know, going within to find the answers. Taming the beast, blocking out distractions, and really taking this time to integrate everything, all this wisdom in you, so you can finally allow yourself to move forward. The Nine of Pentacles, yeah. You're moving towards independence, financial independence. Ending certain things in the material world, ending certain relationships, ending certain what patterns, whatever it is, but you're moving towards financial independence. Once you allow yourself to integrate this truth and let go of what's not serving you, come to peace with your thoughts and your heart space. Open up so you open up to love. Be happy that you have these new beginnings. Be gracious for what you do have. Your dreams are coming into reality, but you have to open up and get this wheel turning. But that's what's happening, is you're ending certain things and moving towards independence. Feeling good health-wise. Completing a certain part of your life that is not necessary anymore. Your, your lover, your person, three of pentacles. They're working on healing Things that didn't work out in the material world, relationships, business partnership, jobs, collaborations of whatever kind that didn't work out. That's what's that's what's blocking it because they 
they were taught or thought they had to chase after it and push people and push and push until the people just didn't want to deal with them anymore or just couldn't handle that kind of energy. So really needing to find that balance and let go of what hasn't worked out to attract like-minded people to collaborate with. There could be a feminine in their life, whether it be a mother figure, a sister, someone close to them, a lover, an ex, whatever this is. But this is, or this can be the divine feminine within them. This is the distorted feminine. So whether it be in their outside world or within their own selves, it's very toxic. It's very low vibing. It's um, manipulating mind games, manipulating with emotions, using spiritual gifts in a, in a toxic way. Um, It's a lot of intense energy, just like on your side, you know, this, this energy and distortion can be, you know, being cutting with your words, being sharp with your words, cutting people down, you know, not being compassionate, that kind of energy, but that's what's being, you have an opportunity to heal this and heal the masculine with it. Well, your partner is mirroring you in the way that they're healing a different aspect of themselves, the feminine within and letting go of any, um, you know, toxic people that made them feel isolated or kept them away from their true destiny. This collaboration could have been a marriage or some kind of partnership that they're needing to heal and let go of. That's like what's been blocking it. Five of Wands, yeah. Toxic, talk about toxic, talk about drama. Holy hell. So this person, your person, whether you're in physical union or, or not with them, they have had to deal with some serious toxic feminine energy in their life. Third party situations, uh, business collaborations that just didn't work out. People were just, just a lot of fighting, a lot of competition. That chasing energy, that 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 forceful energy, it's just all right. And then wanting to leave into victory, something that they thought was victorious not working out. So it's finding the peace and balance with it all, healing the feminine within them, leaving these toxicities, this competition, this drama behind and riding into victory. So you're riding in, you're moving towards independence, feeling good in your health, abundant on your own, and they're, they're being recognized for the work and they're riding into victory. They have the opportunity to, as long as they decide to move towards their destiny and that's going to be victory. Moving out of this energy is what I feel. Okay, let's see. What is healing and manifesting and spirit and whatever spirit has messages spirit has for you? So what's manifesting for you, Sagittarius? What's being brought into the light? And then what's what's manifesting and being brought into the light for your sacred divine lover? Now, if you feel that yourself like on this side more, go ahead, c come on this side. It, because this queen of wands, I mean, that's you, right? Transforming that energy. But but or, you know, you can flip flop it, of course. But this is just how I was guided to do it. So for you, Sagittarius, what's being healed and restored is, oh, finally making a decision. Deciding. You're choosing. Look, you're making the choice. Whatever you were trying to decide on, whatever you were working on, it's like decision time. So that being a, getting this wheel turning, deciding to get that wheel turning, right? And look at that. Get that wheel turning and ride into freedom. Balanced, restored, refreshed. This is the chariot energy. Balance with your head and your heart. Letting go, moving forward, open and receptive. Look how beautiful that energy is. You don't even have to hold on to any reins. It's trusting your intuition. And the energy that's moving you forward is trusting you. So it's And you're trusting the divine. It's just look at how beautiful that is. How gorgeous that energy is. Moving out of the distorted energy into the light and finding that balance and moving forward out of it. Look at this. What's transforming and healing 
is you're able to drop the burdens, finally ending the cycle, getting the truth and clarity, the communication that you need that's necessary to complete this cycle, to finally let go. This is you letting go, feeling like you had to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, that everything was your responsibility, and that burden is ending. You have an opportunity to let go and move forward away from that. Death, look at that. Rebirth, the phoenix rising. This is a rebirth into brand new, beautiful, gorgeous, abundant, vibrant new beginnings. Feeling good in your own skin, shedding the old, wishes coming true, making decisions, moving forward in balance, getting the clarity you need, dropping the burdens, and, and feeling good health-wise and independent in this rebirth. For your person... Oh. Reading them all, right? I thought I had them all. I must have messed them all up. Okay, what's transforming is that this, your person's healing. May need a little time to go within. To find that clarity and truth. To get the information that they need. Connecting to their inner light. The hermit is a very, you know, independent sort of so, um, in solitude. Isolation. But during this isolation, your person is healing is coming into the light. You see, because in this hermit card, sometimes they're really in the darkness or they're laying down or they're whatever. This one is like, I feel like your person's actually coming out of this energy, the hermit mode, healed and restored. And there's the seven of swords. So that's, oh yeah, that can be some pretty deceptive energy. And what I feel from this card is there's no one else in it. So deceiving themselves. That's something that they've been trapped in for a while and letting other people, the, the feminine energy within them or feminines around them, deceive them. And they're like really contemplating like, yeah, I know all of these, these are all the lessons that I, that I need to learn and I really want this clarity and this truth. That's what I'm searching for. That's what I'm going within to get. That's what I'm diving deep to get is that clarity and that truth that I know the universe is giving to me and I know these are all my lessons. I know I can learn from this and just making a plan on how to reach that you know learning the lessons on the way a little bit of pause a little bit of contemplation yeah but then look I'm transforming I'm ready to leave the past behind I want more this this your person is taking your lover is taking their own cup that they've worked on that they've healed that they finally got they're getting out of this energy it's being healed they're being restored they're moving on and they're moving on with their beautiful cup of love Moving towards the ten, the nine of cups, and then the ten of cups, right? Leaving the past behind, leaving this toxicity behind. Look at that, leaving it behind towards sacred, divine union, eleven, eleven, twin flame union, stability, feeling good on their own, and wanting to share it with their sacred lover. Look at the sun shining in this beautiful rebirth. Look at that. Rebirth into brand. This is brand new beginnings. Stability. It's victory. Charging forward in victory. Strong, stable, with love to offer. Wow. Gorgeous energy. Yeah, but at the bottom of the deck is you got the death and there's this tower. It's like let the old die. Just let it all fall away, what's not serving you, belief systems, codependencies, addictions, whatever it is, the past, let it go. Because this is strong and stable. This core root of this union within you is stable. You can just rebuild that together, you see? And it'll be together. That's the key. Okay, with the Victorian steampunk, Sagittarius, we're going to get what is manifesting in the union. In this sacred divine union. Two of Cups. Unconditional love. Balance. Stability. Sharing it. Sharing the love. Two coming together. Soulmate bond. Soulmate recognition. Look at that. The chariot under the chariot. Wow. There's forward movement, balance, stability, moving forward.
moving forward. Look at this. Moving forward past the pain, past the hurt. This is the burdens that you're dropping, the clarity. Leave the past behind. Allow yourself to heal for this rebirth. By focusing on the unconditional love and moving forward, you're going to move past this. This is the healing that's happening. Third-party situations, no more. Letting go of all of that. Yeah, get, getting a sp spirit's perspective, the hangman. Seeing things from a different point of view, from a broader point of view, from a higher mind point of view. So there may be a little pause within this union as, as you heal and find the balance. But the key is focusing on the unconditional love. Sending that unconditional love from your heart space to theirs. And being open to completing cycles. There we go. The three of wands shows up again. That's This is your ship. I was going to say that too. And I probably will. But it's your ship coming in. This union manifesting, this is, you know, in the shared space, this is the ship coming in. This is two coming together to collaborate and be one. Very fiery, very passionate, very creative, very sensual energy. Very balanced as well. The queen of swords balancing the head and the heart. Balancing emotions. Balancing any toxic thoughts. Being clear with communication. So clear communication is manifesting in this union. Collaboration in the material world coming together. Three of wands. Three of pentacles. And you get the three of wands. Three, three, three. You start seeing threes. Three is standing out to me right now for you. But this is collaboration. So things coming together in the material world. And look, transforming, they're transforming the things that haven't worked out, healing, coming out of it, and then, you know, like-minded collaborations, beautiful collaborations. This union is very strong. It has strength. It has stamina to go the distance. It's extremely passionate, extremely sensual, ex a deep spiritual bond. Growing spiritually together. Because nines are all about expansion. Like moving forward together. And the queen of cups. So another queen energy. Ba there you go. It's going to be very balanced in the head and the heart space. Open to love. Receptive. Communicating about it. You know, just being just this. It's just beautiful, gorgeous, unconditional love energy. Trusting your intuition. So love is manifesting and dropping the burdens. Dropping the burdens for these new beginnings. Because right above here is the four of wands. So it's, it's whatever has been burdening you within this union, in your own life, in their life, it's time to drop the burdens. You're, give, you're given that opportunity. And how you do that, how you move out of the hurt and the pain and the burdens and let them go is you allow this healing to happen. And you leave the past behind and allow yourself to rebirth, completion, come out of isolation. This is your destiny. Divine sacred union is your destiny. And you are attracting it to you by doing the things that you need, that you know you need to do to move forward. So now I'm going to give you a quick week by week breakdown um, for you, Sagittarius, and your person. So in the first week, the way I intended this reading, the way I was guided to do it, you have this opportunity to finally make the decision. Finally decide, okay? Finally decide. Move forward towards your destiny. Open yourself up to this soulmate love. Be open to it. Connect to the unconditional love. When you do that, when you go within and you open yourself up and find that balance within yourself, then you make the clear decision that's best for you that comes from a centered heart space. So having choices and making the decision. In the second week, look at this beautiful transformation of your head and your heart space, communicating in a more compassionate way, finding the balance within yourself and forward movement. I mean, pretty powerful forward movement. So expect change, expect growth, expect balance because it's coming. By the third week, it's like 
yeah, I understand. I know what this pain is. I know what these burdens are. I got the clarity now. I'm integrating the lessons, the growth, the wisdom into my form so I can move forward. So there's a lot of healing happening. Be easy on yourself during this time. Be easy. But you're moving forward past all of this. And by the end of the month, you're, it's this rebirth. It's that perspective you needed, feeling good, health-wise, independent, and free. For your person, for your lover, it's like healing the old, healing what didn't work out, going within, finding their truth, and wanting to collaborate in the material world. Attracting like-minded people for business and attracting their sacred divine lover to collaborate in the material world. The second week, you know, it's it could be a very challenging time period during this time because this is like they're re really truly relying on their inner strength, relying on their spiritual strength, relying on the love that you share, the energy that you give them just by being you, just by living your best life. Whether you're in physical or not, you are helping your lover. You are helping them through this harsh energy. Send them love. Send them, you know, clear thoughts. Um whatever it is that you feel, you know, envision them overcoming this because they're almost there, but it's been really difficult, this transformation, this ending of whatever this cycle is. By the third week, it's like, okay, I've got the peace. I understand. I, I'm moving away from this toxic energy. I'm moving away from this competition, from this drama, and I'm moving on to better things. And what I'm focusing on is my own cup and being open to love. So they're opening themselves up to this unconditional love. They're opening themselves up to love again, to loving their life, to their spiritual journey, to their um, spiritual growth to understanding their emotions, emotional intelligence is coming for this person and, and healing the divine feminine within. By the end, they're riding into victory. They're strong, they're stable, dropping the burdens, want, moving victoriously into these new beginnings. I like it. See what you get out of it too, you know? See what messages you get. So, I love you guys and I appreciate any and all support, donations, gifts from Amazon, booking readings and healings, all of it, liking it, subscribing because it gets my them all circulating. So this is a gift. I love cards. I'm a card collector and I want to have them all. I'm just saying. But the Queen of the Moon Oracle is a gift for all of you. It's a beautiful deck and I absolutely love it. And so I always use my resources as wisely as I can. And I really do love this channel. And I love sharing my gifts with you guys and expressing myself in this way. And cards are just a beautiful representation, a beautiful way to tell a story. I, I, I enjoy it so much. So thank you. I appreciate all of you. And here's your final messages, Sagittarius. Please reach out to me for personal reading or healing if you wish. Oh, look at that. You're blossoming. Oh, wow. The flower moon, abundance, prosperity, good health, heart healing, the ascended masters working with you, leveling up to mastership. Three plus three is six. Blessings and beauty coming in from the past efforts to, uh, you know, just really give you peace and tranquility. I just, what a gorgeous time. Blossoming into who you are meant to be. going to read from the book here. Do not give up. You have planned for this. Take no notice of what others think or say about you. Open and rise. Someone around you may be jealous of your success. Mark your victories. Your affirmation for the month, Sagittarius, is I joyfully blossom and I feel no fear. In the country in which I live, there really aren't a lot of meadows, the, that classic kind of gently rolling open space, often between a forest or mountains. This kind of space whispers to you, here, rest a while, lay down, my friend, it's soft. The first true meadow I saw was in Yosemite National Park in the United States. It was early spring, the snows had pretty much stopped and nature had taken her opportunity. In front of me, as far as I could see, was a green meadow of grasses covered in blossoming flowers. It was so beautiful, I, it almost made me cry. 
I just stood there for a long while taking it all in. It felt so hopeful and new and joyful. So I felt hopeful and renewed and joyful. I walked into the meadow and was soon surrounded by this blossoming. The flower fragrance drifted up with the breeze. There was a dusting of pollen on my clothes. I could hear the contented buzzing of a few insects. In that moment, I was so grateful to be a part of the meadow. Anything seemed possible here. There is a time to blossom. We plant seeds physically and metaphorically, so they will blossom into what we intend. Perhaps the journey has been a long and hard one, but we shouldn't give up, especially if we are close. Fear is usually the thing that prevents flow and blossoming. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of change, fear of what people think. I could go on and on, but know if we can release the useless fears and begin to enjoy our growth and eventual blossoming, it will all be worthwhile. The, your companion stone at this time is the ruby. Nothing is wasted, all part of the plan. You are blossoming and rebirthing into brand new life. And this union, this sacred union is blossoming and blooming into new beginnings and new life. I love you all.